Have you ever wanted to create in Microsoft Word a list of items that, let's say you're going to go shopping or something and you want to offset it with maybe a dot for each item in your list or maybe number it in order of importance like one, two, three. Well, you can do that really easy. Let's go ahead and begin. Let's say we're going to go on a camping trip. So I'll type in camping and then I want to begin with some symbols here for each item in my list. To do so, up in the paragraph group on the Home tab here, you're going to have a bullet button which will, when you click on it, adds a bullet. You also have a number button. When you click on the number, it'll start with number one, so it's the list of importance, number one being the most important. And then later we'll cover um, the multi-level list. If you recall back in your high school or college days when you had to create an outline, where capital A per se was the most important point, and then under that, a subtopic to that capital A um, main topic would be indented, and also have maybe a, a lowercase like letter I or maybe a, a number or Roman numeral number. Well, like I said, we'll cover that later. But let's start with our bullet points by clicking on the bullet button. And let's say what we want to bring on our camping trip here. And that's basically it. Uh, if you don't like the dots next to it, the bulleted items or the symbols, you can always change that. Just click somewhere in your bulleted item list and then come back up here instead of clicking on the bullet button click on its adjacent drop down arrow to get a list of recently used bullets and when you hover over it updates it you can see it over next to pillow flashlight and matches and then you have a bullet library anytime you use a bullet or you define or make a new bullet and you can do that by coming down here to define new bullet it'll keep it in that library for you so you can use it later. Now you can use the defaults like I said by clicking cancel and clicking on the drop down arrow and using the defaults here like maybe a square and click OK and there's my squares. Or you can define a new bullet and click on that. You can define it by a symbol. Click on the symbol button and choose from a list array of symbols here. Or you can select a, a picture now, I've already imported some pictures here that I can use, but of course Microsoft has their own list of pictures. Um, let's say this one, that looks pretty nice for a bullet point. I'll select it and click OK. It gives me a preview here, and then I click OK again, and that looks pretty nice. Now, if I have pictures somewhere on my computer that I'd rather use, for a presentation maybe, for Microsoft Word that I want to print off so it looks nice, again, you can come up here, click on that drop-down arrow, define new bullet, click on the picture button but this time you'll import and it opens up the window so you can browse through somewhere on your computer to find your pictures right now I'm looking in my picture folder and in the picture folder I have another folder called the sample pictures I can double click on that and let's say I want this picture right here the tree picture I'll click add and it adds my tree picture here I'll select it click OK gives me a preview it's so tiny it just Anyways, you get my point. You can select pictures and import them. Click OK. can't see it, but at least I can do that. Let's say that we want to change this into a list of importance. Like, I'm not going to go camping, at least unless I have my pillow. So to say that that's the number one item, I can click somewhere in here in my uh, bulleted list, come up here in the paragraph group, and click on the uh, numbering button. One, two, three, and it adds it. Now, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, you know what, flashlight, is not number two because matches will do two things for me keep me warm give me a fire and secondly it'll light up the campsite so how about if I select matches click and drag and then in the middle of my selection I click on it and I drag it up to before F and flashlight and let go and voila it automatically switches it around for me now it added this uh, number four for me I don't need that so I just click right on the line number four and come back up in the paragraph group and you can see it's highlighted the button the numbering button click on it to unhighlight it gets rid of number four for me now you can customize your numbering list just like you did with your bulleted items just by clicking somewhere uh, one of the items in the list and of course clicking on its adjacent drop down arrow to the numbering button and you can see some of the most recently used uh, formats here by hovering over them like for this one example when you look at my pillow matches and flashlight over to the left there you'll see it's a tinier font and it's 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 now notice this little section right here is highlighted so what I can do is my default 1, 2, 3, I can define it and make changes to it, which I really don't want to do. Let's use a recent one here and click on this funky looking one. <laughs> and let's say that we want to go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and we want to define a new numbering format here based upon this template that's already selected. Click on it. And let's see the font. We don't want it to be purple. Let's do something bolder like red. Ooh, that's fancy. 
Let's make it smaller. Size 18 is too big, so we'll go down to 12. And we don't need it bold. We'll do regular. Maybe no shadow. Uh, let's give it an outline. And then click OK. We can see it in the preview. Click OK again. Yeah, I'm thinking it doesn't look all that great. So I'll go ahead and undo that here. But nonetheless, you get my point. And I'll undo it again. Now, have you ever had a list that you started here, and let's say we click below it, or when you click and you hit enter and you need to continue typing but not add it to the list, of course you can deselect the number button up here to get rid of it. And you're starting new list, and let's say when you start your new list, it automatically continues the numbering for you, like 1, 2, 3, then it goes 4, 5, 6. In fact, let's do it here. Let's start with 1 or maybe it starts with one but you want it to continue four five six well, let's go ahead and type in a few more items that we want to bring so what we want to do is we want to continue with additional items we can always right click on number one and say we want to continue the numbering from the list item above by clicking on continuing numbering so it goes one two three four five six or if it continues automatically for you because Microsoft Word likes to think likes to uh, help out when it can and if it does and it's not helpful then again when in doubt right click on number four and say you'd rather restart for this list here at number one and continue to two three and four and so forth We've got our bullet button to uh, add symbols next to our list items. Then we have our order of importance or numbering button for our list items. And then finally we have our multi-level list. And to show you how that works, I'm going to pull up another document here, clicking on the office button and going down to a, a more recent document. Telemarketers do not call. Click on it. And I'm going to scroll to the bottom here. You can see I've got uh, a list of bulleted items there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select those. And then up in the paragraph group, I'm going to click on the drop down arrow for my multi level list and then look down below and hover over it. And it gives me an idea of how it's going to level it out this list because there's going to be order of importance. Like the one at the top, number one, that's outdented, is going to be the main topic. And if I have subtopics to that, it shows me what it's going to look like a lowercase a. And it's got a, a bracket here, parentheses, and it's going to be indented. And if there's a subtopic to that, it's going to be lowercase i and so forth. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now by default, since they were all at the same level, they all begin at the highest level. You got one, two, three, four, all at the same level. Now let's say this paragraph right here is a subtopic or a sublevel to uh, number one. In order to make the change, go ahead and click anywhere in number two, and then up in the paragraph group, you want to click on the increase indent button, and automatically it makes it a subtopic to number one by dropping it, indenting it, and giving it the lowercase letter a. Let's go to the next one. Let's say that uh, number two here is a subtopic to letter A, which is a subtopic to one. Well, click in there and click not once, but twice, and it indents it further past the letter A, and it gives it a lowercase uh, let letter I. Of course, by the same token, if that's not true, then you can click on the outdent button once and then twice. Of course, you can also customize this by clicking on the multi-level list uh, button here and going down into defining a new multi-level list and this gets a little bit more tricky because you're working with your different levels here and you notice when you select a level it bolds it over here so that's what you're changing in here if you don't want it to be number one here and you don't want the font to be say size whatever the size it is you can change it here I like staying with the format the template not messing with that much uh, the only other things you need to know is that if it's not indented, like you see this little space in between the number one and the first letter D, you're looking at your text indentation here. I'm going to click cancel. You can change it numerically there, but you can also click here and come up here and make changes to your first line indent, your hanging indent. You can basically, uh, or even the full paragraph, just click and drag and bring it over more if you want to, but then you're starting to mess with your level. But nonetheless, you get that choice to make the changes uh, freehand here as well. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.